Perfect. So traders from around the world, my goal and objective right now, as every Wednesday, I like to reach out to someone in the trading community and just get their feedback, their thoughts, their experiences, their story, their strategies, and just learn from them. Just kind of get some information and get some insight and understand how they do what they do and why they do what they do and where they do what they do. I'm on the phone with an absolute slayer of the market, uh, Alex Hill, who is part of our trading community. And Alex, welcome, my friend. Thanks for being here. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. It's good to be with you. Yeah, likewise, man. And I just want everyone to know that you and I and Tony, Tony was on the uh, interview last week and everyone really liked his energy and his inspiration and his story. Tell us a little bit about you, man. How'd you get interested into this whole trading thing? Yeah, I think I've always had uh, an interest in the markets and trading and investing. Um, you know, when I was younger, just kind of put money away in company 401ks and a little bit of, um, you know, uh, you know, some, some dabbling in different stocks and things like that, but just sort of buying and, and just, you know, checking on them every few weeks and, you know, not much. And then when I was younger, it's probably in 2000, um, it was actually at my grandfather's funeral. I was staying at my uh, grandma's house and there was a lot of people at the house and I had an uncle who was an accountant and then he did some day trading on the side. So I'd heard about it and, and I kind of wanted to know more. And so actually the morning of my grandfather's funeral, we were kind of in this room and he was trading and I was like, can I just watch? Can I just see how this is going? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I'm like watching him. And so this is when the dot com, you know, bubble was going strong and stocks were moving crazy and the tech tech stocks and everything. And and I saw him make a trade and it was like seventy five thousand dollars and my eyes just got great big and I was like, Well, what? <laughs> yeah. Wow. How does this go? And he just laughed, you know. And um it was funny. I remember it as he was beginning. Um that day before the market opened and he was getting kind of set up uh he was like in a chat room or something with some trading buddies and and they said um you know buy the gaps mm -hmm. and it's like one of the only thing that i remember him saying and so fast forward um you know to to recently i'm like i remember him saying something about this and it led me to kind of a search so i i started you know, really getting um, active in day trading last May, mm -hmm. right? So, so less than a year, and uh, still consider myself pretty new and still learning. And bought some books and watched a lot of videos and some different programs and, and quite a bit in options. I was kind of like, what? What's options? You know, I'd received options from companies that I'd worked for. Um, I've worked for, in technology for all my career, and so we, you know, different companies going public and things have had options. So I understood that, but like trading options, I'd never had done that. So lots right. of kind of study on options and what they were about and how they go. And so, um, you know, I was, I was in actually a, a different room and they were trading Apple. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna jump in. I'm gonna buy some Apple options. I just got to figure this out. I got to see how this goes. Maybe I'll lose money. And within like 15 minutes, I had made like $1,100. Right. And I was like, wait, I got to sell this. What? What's this? <laughs> you know? So it led me to like, you know, a much more thorough study of options and, and really kind of tracking how do stocks compare as far as an ROI versus options? And I, and I did this for a, a number of, of companies, different time periods and things like this. And I was like, they go up a lot more. Like mm. the return is just way more. And, um, you know, so I think it, it's funny now. I, I hear a lot of people who are worried about options like, oh, the Greeks, you know, the Greeks. It's just, oh, I can't keep track of it. It's too much. And I, I guess they just, they, I mean, I get that, that there are some other factors of what's going on. But um, I think if you take some time to really analyze each one of those and really look at, okay, I made a trade in whatever the stock was, what would that have been like if I traded um, that as a call or put, you know, sure. how would that have gone? What would that have cost? What, what would that have, have been like? Um, 
I, you know, so anyway, I, I think everyone's on a different journey. Um, options just make a lot of sense to me. And uh, so I do the lot, but, um, but yeah, you know, I found you in the fall, like October, I want to say. Yeah. Um, and, you know, loved your energy and enthusiasm and like, is this guy for real? Like, is this, you know, <laughs> and so, but I joined your room and, and kind of saw what it was all about and listened to Brad and Blake and everybody else is like, wow, this is really good energy and everyone's really supportive and helpful and sharing their trades and what doesn't work and um, just different, you know? Yeah. And so. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. That's, that's first of all, thank you for the kind compliment. And, uh, and secondly, um, I'm really happy that you got started that way. It, it, you said you haven't had any kind of crazy horror stories yet or anything. No, no account blowouts, nothing terrifying. No blowouts. I definitely have lost a lot of money. Um, you know, from when I started actively trading in like June through November, um, lost money mostly lost mm. money and it was very humbling and had lots of moments where I'm like, okay, I don't know how to do this. Like mm -hmm. I got to go back and really understand what's going on. And so reviewing principles over and over again, tons of back trading and um, you know, lowering my risk, lots of paper trading and then just kind of slowly kind of building from there. And so from December um, I've had all winning months. Um, nice. December to today have all been positive. Um, so building my confidence and increasing my R and my account size. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Dude, congrats. That's huge. Yeah, Exciting. Thanks. It's amazing. So tell us how you do it, man. What's your strategy? What do you focus on? Like what's your go-to? Yeah. How do you make money doing this stuff? How do I make money? Yeah. You know, I think, um, when I started last summer, um, I would hear people talk about um, trading pl trading plans, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, I didn't, I didn't care about that. I didn't want to dig in on that. I was like, what? How do I find the stocks that are going up? You know, it was just kind of yeah. this basic, like, <laughs> simple, you know, view of the world. Um, but because one one of the thoughts I had was, okay, now that I understand how much options will move when a stock moves, now I just got to figure out even small movements you know, even small movements, either way, I just have to have confidence in that. And so I think, you know, in November, as part of kind of my process of really being humbled through the process, I did establish a trading plan and did understand, okay, you just have to have discipline. You have to have rules, you know, that you follow and, and do that. Um, so I kind of, I kind of break my trading plan up into four um, main areas. The first is kind of stock selection. What things am I going to, you know, trade that day or, or follow? Okay. Um, the second is entries. Like what are my rules around entries? Uh, the second, the third is uh, what are my rules around exits? And then the fourth is just kind of psychology, like how like psychological, <laughs> you know, my thought process and, and the overriding and, and actually, you know, one thing I didn't mention earlier was I, I have a, a neighbor that moved uh, to my neighborhood about a year and a half ago where we kind of became friends and he's a day trader. And so I'm like, okay, I got to, what do you do? And so I, I spent a morning with him and, and I, I've never been able to pin down his rules. He's been trading since like the mid nineties. And so he's very much, as he describes it, you know, he goes on feel. Yeah. And he just kind of watches things and he knows what they're going to do. And he's really successful. So I believe him. But the thing that he would go on and on to me about is psychology and the way you think about it. And that was kind of another area I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I've, I've realized more and more how important that is. Um, being patient, being disciplined. You know, I had, I had a real FOMO problem. I just couldn't stand that there were so many things moving up and down and I wasn't in on that trade, you know, and, mm. and trying to take too many trades. And so I think getting my psychology right was, was a big thing for me. Um, and it's still something I, I think about kind of every morning when I'm getting prepared is there's going to be thousands of profitable trades and I might get just two or three of them and that's okay. And there's going to be thousands more tomorrow and that's okay. Now, do you like repeat that to yourself? Do you like, I mean, how's that work? Do you have like a mantra? Yeah. yeah. You know, in the morning when I get started, um, 
about, about an hour and a half before the market opens, I kind of get set up and get going for the day and I kind of review all the things in my plan and then start reviewing stocks. Um, I've got about 60 or so that I really like um, that are kind of in this standard list. Mm -hmm. And I kind of go through those and I'm, and I'm always just focusing on gaps. Um, my favorite is retest gaps. Um, I guess, you know, from a, from a psychological perspective or like from a feel, they just feel right to me. Like they make sense to me when I don't care if they're going up or down. Sure. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll draw four lines on every chart that ends up on my list, which is what was the prior day high? What was the prior day low? What was the pre-market high? And what was the pre-market low? And those four lines are, are somewhat of a, of a range that, that I'm liking to, you know, understand and follow and, um, you know, how the stock is moving within those. Um, mm. And so, I, so let's, I let's do that on AMD because yeah. you because you okay. trade AMD yesterday, I think, right? I think I did, man. That the days and the stocks. I did not trade AMD yesterday. Okay, I That's traded right. it on Monday. Monday. All right. Yeah. So, so let's let's walk through how you did on Monday. So what I'll do okay. is I'll draw a pre market low, which was actually and strangely enough the low of the previous day. Yeah. And then we have. Uh, a pre-market high, which is right about there. Mm -hmm. And then we have the previous high of the day, which is there. And so we have pretty much three or four lines. So if you're looking at AMD, what's kind of your walkthrough? What's your thoughts? Market open? What do you get? Yeah. Next? I never trade um, in the first five minutes. Um, right. I'm just letting the market do its thing. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at is what is the SPY doing? So in my chart, I have it set up as a four chart view. Um, so mm -hmm. I've got four charts and one of them is always the spy. And so if the spy is going up, that is just like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, you know, the market is like the ocean and either the tides coming in or the tides going out. And I just want to go with the tide. Like the waves might push me back and forth, but in general, I want to go with the tide. So the spy is kind of always there and if it's going up, then I'll almost only trade bullish. Gotcha. Um, if it's going down, then I'm almost always trade bearish. So today is like really weird where it gapped down and it's just going sideways. Um, I, I took one trade today. I don't think I'll take any other ones. Um, so yeah, so AMD here. Um, what I'm thinking about is, okay, uh, if it's, you know, gapping up, and you know then what i want to see is it pull back and then clear pre-market highs and also be above the 20 ema yeah um i i'm a big believer in the 10 and 20 ema and the 20 is kind of a guide for me i you know that's a big one for angela and she was great to take some time with me a while back and talk me through her philosophy as well. And I, I just love hearing other people's thoughts about how they evaluate things. It kind of adds to <laughs> my soup, you know, if you will, sure. um, into my, my recipe. So, so yeah, as soon as it, as soon as it clears right there, um, and I'm trying to look to see where I actually entered. Um, but I want it to clear um, yeah, that pre-market high. And so I think right there where it pulled back into, I don't know what your red line is. Is that the 20? That's the 20. 20. Yep. Yeah. So I'm taking it on that next candle. Um, so what time would that have been? Five, 10, is this three, five minute, five, ten. Yeah, yeah five that candle right. right there. Yep. Okay. That's where I entered. Now when you're buying that, uh, so you're buying call options. Correct. Sweet. And, and usually what I'll do, um, I have two thoughts with options um, when I'm entering. So a lot of people hate the wide bid ask spread and I understand that, um, but I can bid whatever I want, right? I can, I can hit limit offers for whatever I want. And I'm usually, mm -hmm. I'm usually offering in the low end of that range, something like in the bottom 25%. So if it's a dollar spread, I'm in the bottom quarter, you know, somewhere around there. And my thought is if I get it, great. And if I don't get it, 
okay. And, and I've been surprised, especially on very wide, you know, spreads like Tesla, how often I get filled. And so Absolutely. it's, yes. yeah, it's amazing. And it's like, immediately I am profitable as soon as I'm, I'm filled. Um, and so it's sort of a bid ask arbitrage, if you will. Um, yep. And, and so I'll do that quite do a bit. You use? I use E-Trade. E-Trade, um, got it. I've always been, been E-Trade. I use E-Trade Pro, uh, which is an application that gets installed. And so I don't like the power E-Trade. And, um, you know, they've got some web-based web, web -based tools that I don't really like as much. But, but yeah, I use E-Trade Pro. Got it. Got it. Got it. So yeah, I mean, throwing in a limit order, what, what's your fear, man? I mean, cause sometimes what if it doesn't fill? Do you ever chase? Do you ever like increase it? How long do you keep it open? Yeah, I, um, I've been getting better. I, I used to chase a lot <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I've been getting better at just letting it run. And so as it gets extended, you know, from the EMAs, I'm like, Nope, you have fun. I'll find something else. Um, so that's kind of a psychology thing that I'm just like, man, it would have been good, you know? Um, and yeah, there was another thought about options that, that I typically, um, uh, it'll come to me. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> do you remember on Monday when you're taking that option trade, do you remember what strike do you buy or do you always buy the same strike at the money? Oh, do, you, do you look at Delta yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, good question. That that triggered the thought. The other thing that I do is, um, I think a lot of people like to buy at the money. Um, it's it's good delta per what you pay for it. Um, I've done a lot of analysis, and I'm going to do more. But I've done I've done quite a bit around. Okay, you know, how did the price of an in the money option move? versus an at the money versus an out of the money. Mm -hmm. And depending on the size of it, maybe it's $2, you know, between them or something like that. And I'm finding the best ROI is on out of the money options. Mm -hmm. okay? So if it was, you know, where did I take it? 49, 48 and something, you know, maybe I'll buy a 50 call option. Um, it's a lot cheaper. And um, technically the Delta is a lot lower, yep. but what it actually gets to uh, the ROI is much better. And Absolutely. so I don't hear a lot of people talk about that. Um, that's just one thing that, that I do um, that I've been doing like the last two months that have, have really worked out really well. Oh yeah. ROIs are exceptional with out of money options. I mean, how, how do you pick which strike? Do you, do you always just do two or three strikes above or do you look at like, Oh, okay, this is a target of where it yeah. could get to. So let me buy that strike and then I'll sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Usually kind of like, okay, I think it's going to get there. That's what I'm looking at. I'm also looking at the Delta, usually like a low 40 Delta 0.42, something like that um, is generally what I've been selecting. Got it. Yeah. Gotta, the other gotta. thing that I do is, um, depending on the stock and the way things are going, I will usually buy it at least a week out. So like this week I've been buying April 24 options um, because obviously theta um, takes away, it, it degrades on the value of the stock, um, you know, the, the time decay. Um, but it's less so as you go further out. Right. So as you, as you, and so I have to pay more, you know, for those options, but in it, but they're also going to be worth more when I sell them, they're also going to, you know, kind of retain that. Uh, the time decay as you, as you look at it is much higher in the current week. Um, so I'm usually in and out, you know, 99% of my trades are day trades. And so it's, it's the same day. And so theta is not doing much, uh, maybe some, uh, but the biggest factor is obviously the price of the stock. So if I've got confidence that the stock is going to move where I want it to move or, you know, some degree of confidence, then, then I'm in and, um, letting that price movement, you know, do its thing. Gotcha. And are you focusing on the five minute chart, three minute? Do you have both up? Yeah. Five minute. Um, when I'm doing analysis after hours and before hours, I have a, kind of a two chart view where I've got the daily and a five minute. Um, I'll sometimes move the daily to different time frames. pretty much those two, but yeah, pretty much five minutes. I used to be like one minute, um, 
you know, back in the fall and the winter time. And I've just kind of like, ah, it's too much data, too much moving and five minutes is good. And, um, you know, so a much more simple approach. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now, when you're training these options, do you base the stop on like, uh, like do you do absolute zero method? Do you put a hard stop in for the out of money options? Cause a lot of times when people do out of the money options, they're buying them for, you know, whatever, let's say on AMD, like 35 cents. And so their stop is just zero. So like if it goes yeah. to zero, they lose whatever risk they're comfortable losing. How, how does that work for you? Yeah. With the stop. Um, if I'm on my game and there's not a lot going on, then I'll actually pull up uh, the option value in each trade. I can, you know, pull up the chart uh, of the value of it. And it's, you know, this is the hard part about trading options, hard to determine the correct stops. Um, so, you know, with, you know, by, by pulling up like from an options chain and then opening up that option in a chart, I can see the price movement of it for the last, you know, week or whatever. And so I can say, okay, at this price level, the option should be about this much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's not an exact science, but um, I kind of calculate it that way. Uh, I've done some zero, absolute zero, you know, trades. I'm like, no, oh, all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Do you, do you use any other indicators like average true range or anything, or is it just really the moving averages, your support resistance, and you're always keeping an eye on the spy? Yeah. The other one that I've kind of got turned on to actually two others that I've got turned on to that I'm kind of been experimenting in the last few weeks really is the volume profile. Um, I've been kind of learning about futures, uh, from the trading classes. And so there's a lot of volume profile talk. And so that's, that's interesting, uh, to kind of view volume on that, um, axis. And so to kind of compare it, so I've been looking at that way to kind of look at that range. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another indicator within trading view called the money flow index. Um, yeah, it's kind of like, money flow. have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of interesting to me. It's like RSI. Uh, but it kind of calculates volume um, a lot more into it. it. There's a whole wiki page that talks about what it does. So that, that's, that's been interesting. I've, I've looked at that quite a bit. And when it gets over, you know, like a 90 on the money flow index, it's, it's a good indication it's topping. It's either going to slow or pull back um, and vice versa as it gets low, you know. So those are kind of two that I add. But, but the EMAs are the, are the big ones, the 10 and the 20 um, that I'm following. Gotcha. So you shared some of your rules with entries and you mentioned you follow kind of the same stocks and you kind of, you're mostly looking for retest gaps. Do yep. you have a preference bullish versus bearish? Does it matter? You know, um, usually the market is bullish. Um, it hasn't been for the last month and a half, but um, in general, so, so I, I think that looks better to my eye. That makes sense to me, but I will say um, I made a lot of money when the market dropped um, you know, and end of February and, and through March, March was a really good month. And, and I took a lot of, a lot of bear trades. Uh, yeah. so I like those a lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Once they start, man, once the bears wake up, it can be fun. Cause it's just so fast, you know, yep. it's, it's usually short lived, but it's, it is still exciting. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Do you have a favorite go-to set of five or six stocks that you watched out of, out of that list? You know, I, I've really enjoyed the April challenge with those five. Those five has always, always been on my list of, you know, 50 or 60 that, I, that I've got. Um, I would say in addition to those, I trade Beyond quite a bit, um, mm -hmm. Walmart quite a bit, and Amazon quite a bit. Um, I do shop. I, I do quite a bit of, of shop trades as well. Um, but... I am not a discriminator. So whatever wants to play that day, I'm happy to play. Yeah. I mean, how long did you spend getting your craft? Because you mentioned one thing that stands out to me when you said like, if you, if you're feeling on your game, yeah. how, do you know you're, how do you know you're feeling on your game? Like, how do you feel in, in, like into the market? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess, um, my morning prep is that key time to figure out what's going on. So one of the first things I look at is, is CNBC and, and um, you know, just to kind of review the headlines. What, what are the big headlines that, that are being talked about and what passed and what's coming up and what, you know, whatever, what downgrade or whatever. Um, and then I look at the spy 
and see what that's doing, what the Qs are doing and like the IWM and, and the Russell, um, just to get a sense of like what the markets are doing so far. And then I sit and review all of those stocks and see how they, how they look. And I, I feel like I get a sense of what, what the market's about, you know, in general. Um, you know, you never know, right? Things could drastically change, but, but, but you get a feel for it. And so if, if I don't have a sense of it, like if it feels very indecisive, then, then I just, I don't take as many trades. Um, you know, I'm, I've, I've gotten better about sitting on my hands and just kind of watching mm-hmm. um, and be okay with that. Hmm. How many trades do you take per day, you think, on average? Yeah, I would say um, last fall, I was like, <laughs> maybe like 10 to 15 trades a day. Okay. And I realized that doesn't work so well. Like the fewer trades I take, the better I tend to do. And so I'd say in the last two months, I've been around three to four um, is what I'm taking per day. Um, gotcha. so I, I just took one today and that's probably all I'll have, but an average of three to four. So let's walk us through the trade you took today. Which one was that since it's so fresh? You know, I took Teladoc, um, TDOC. So yeah. Teladoc um, was on my list as a bullish retest gap. Classic. Had, Look at that was, nice gap. Yeah, it was it was up nice yesterday, and it was different than the market. Right, everything was down, and so there was just a handful of, of bull retest gaps. And so I was just kind of watching it, you know, and, and just kind of flipping through. And so, you know, if you go to the five minute, um, then, it, you know, I drew my lines. And then obviously, let me look at yours. Okay. Yeah, let's, so let's draw all those lines. There you go. In. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is one question that someone had to me the other day. Uh, they said, how do you know if a retest gap is finished retesting. So we're gonna to try to answer that on some of this, on this exact one, but mm. here's the four lines. So the four lines we have, pre-market high, pre-market low, high of the day of yesterday, and low of the day of yesterday. Yep, Okay, exactly. so this is a five minute chart, so let's kind of zoom in. So how'd you play this guy? How did it go? Yep, so it came down and obviously hit the, the pre-market low and, and tested that and then came, came back off of it. And I'm trying to remember where I entered. Um, I actually entered. Uh, so the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh candle where, where it's coming down there, the, the little um, bear hammer candle. Right here. Yep. Yep. Um, I entered there. So it, it pulled back pretty close to the 10 EMA. Um, I felt like that was, and I, and I got a fill. Um, right there. So it was, bef- it was above the previous high of the day. Um, and I felt like it had room to the pre-market high uh, was the way that I was the way. Got it. I- Got yeah. it. So the key is in this one, like you're, the flow that you're feeling, we have a bounce off of pre-market support, bull candle, bull candle, bull candle. So three bull candles in a row. We're closing above all moving averages. Yep. You go, all right, on a pullback, I'm going to buy it. Now yes. you don't know that it's going to bounce though, right? Correct. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's always I, the worst part. Yeah, it's always a risk, right? And so I feel like, you know, at that point, we've got momentum. We're above moving averages. We're above the previous day high. I'm uh, taking the risk. And I feel like there's room to go up to the pre-market high. Um, so I entered. And then that little sort of mini flag pattern right above that, I love that. Like, that makes my heart sing. Um, where it just kind of goes up, consolidates right back to the EMAs. Uh, I would have been so in on that. And then, um, you know, I, I sold uh, right, right, you know, it went a little higher, but I sold basically at the pre-market high at the top there. Pre-market high, like uh, the, this, one, this one up here? Right there. Yep. Yeah. So I had a little more to go. But it went higher. Um, Why'd you sell there? It went higher. Yeah. And so I... <laughs> <laughs> And, and that for me is like something I'm honestly still wrestling with because I feel like, A, it was, you know, you can see how extended it is from the 10 EMA at that point, but it's at that pre-market high. Um, it could go higher and it, I've seen a lot of times it, you know, comes right down. It can't get through that. Um, so I was okay. Uh, I think this one was like a, 
1.2 R if I remember for me. Yeah, about 1.2 R for me on that one. Um, and so I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay getting a piece of the action, right? And just, I think of it as stacking wood, just keep stacking wood and yeah. just throw it in the pile and, and move on. And yeah, maybe it goes up. So I, I, I think I'll perfect kind of those exits and things, but I mean, it didn't go a lot higher. So I, I, I got a good part of the move. I totally agree. And so right here, like how'd you hold through that retracement? That's 20 minutes of sidewaysness. Yeah, I, I was good because, I mean, it had moved up so much. So I'm kind of expecting, again, kind of waves of the sea, right? You know, some of the waves are coming out, but I knew which way the tide was going. Um, so I was okay with that. And, and in fact, like, you know, by the third candle there, I'm like, oh, this is like just a nice consolidation. It's going to snuggle up against the 10 EMA and it's going to keep going. Um, I just, I've seen that quite a bit and that's just what I, what, what felt right to me, what, it, you know, my eyes believed. <laughs> mm. And, uh, so I was, I was good with that. I was half tempted to buy more, um, uh, right there. Yeah. Do you ever do that? Ever add to a winner or something like that? I do. Yeah, I do add to winners. Um, I've got a rule that I don't add to losers, <laughs> but I, I will add to, you know, like, so like, I've had a lot of situations where, you know, I've been wrong and I've been down, you know, however much I haven't been stopped out. And I'm like, Oh, look at this pattern. This is great. Now it's, it's bouncing off of this. And this is really where I should have bought it. Um, and I have bought there. I've been right. Sometimes I've been wrong um, a bunch of times. So I just don't add to losers anymore, but I will add to winners um, if it looks sure. right. So if you're getting in, it's working in your favor. It looks okay. You'll add to that tray, but if you're getting in and it's just not going your way, you don't add to it. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing about it, and, and I can see Thomas's comment there in the chat, the spy wasn't doing real well. So this was kind of a break for me where usually I won't take this trade because the spy was just going sideways. Kind of my thought was, man, it's strong relative to the spy. If the spy kind of turns up, this sucker could really just fly. Um, mm. So, yeah, because you mentioned you have four charts, and one of your charts is the spy. Is the spy, spy is also on a five minute chart for you. Yep, yep, spy is on the five. Yeah, Got exactly. It. So, I'll usually have like, you know, the spy and then a trade I'm in. You know, if I'm in two, I'll have one and then one that I'm just kind of cycling through the stuff in my list to figure out is there a setup I like? Is there a setup I like? Mm -hmm. So, I understand. Totally understand. Yeah. So do you ever, do you ever trade the spy or do you trade individual stocks? Yeah. Yeah. I've done the spy quite a bit. Um, I like the spy. Yeah. I've, I've traded the spy quite a bit. Um, Q's a little bit, um, you know, mostly individual stocks, but um, yeah, I'll do the spy sometimes. Got it. Got it. Got it. So when you're doing your, I don't know many options. Do you ever get creative, turn them into a spread, hold overnight? Do you ever have any rules about anything like that? Yeah, overnight, like swing trades. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I haven't done a lot recently. Ever since, you know, the coronavirus crash or whatever we call this. Um, <laughs> I I actually did at the beginning of March um, a lot of puts that I was buying and just holding because I was – I mean, it was almost like throwing darts at a dartboard or, or fish in a barrel, whatever analogy you want to use. You could just short everything and it was just going down. Yeah. Um, it was really easy to make, make money. Um, so I did, I did have a bunch, you know, ever since it kind of bottomed and, and then kind of bounced, I haven't really had a, a lot of overnights. Um, I did hold Tesla overnight. Oh, was it Monday or Friday in the last week? I held it overnight and it, and it gapped up really nice um, and did well on it. I just, I just felt like it was just consolidating sideways and I, and I felt like it was in a bullish trend and I just held on to it. And so because yeah. I had, you know, next week's options, you know, two weeks out, I, I wasn't too worried about theta. I wasn't worried about the time decay. And so um, I held. Um, yeah, because time decay, I mean, a lot of people do talk about it, but realistically, time decay only hurts you if it doesn't move in your favor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If an option moves in your favor, theta doesn't matter, realistically. Yeah. I mean, there's three, there's really three main factors that affect the price of the option. Price, time, and volatility. And the mm -hmm. number one is price. Like price mm -hmm. will overwhelm all of those easily. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, the Greeks kind of measure those and quantify those and, you know, gamma and whatever, but uh, if you sit and analyze what they are and what options do, it, it's really the price of the stock. Yep, that's, that's going to be the, that's number one. Yeah. And then implied volatility, I would say is number two. Theta is definitely on the list, but it's lower for me, especially yeah. if you're only doing a week or two, you already know you're battling it. So if you're buying it, you're either right or you're wrong. If you're right immediately or you're right in general, uh, yep. if the trade works, man, it's going to work. You know, yeah. theta, doesn't, theta doesn't matter. The option will increase in value if you're going the direction you want to go in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's okay. the keys, you know, just really kind of directional trades, um, catch well, yeah. a chunk of the movement, you know. So talk to me a little bit about the psychology part. You mentioned that's something you studied a lot and Thomas mentioned or, or uh, Mark mentioned in the chat and he says trading is easy. The battling, it's the battling of yourself is hardest. So how yeah. do you cope with the psychology piece of all this? Yeah, um, good question. So I think the number one, you know, rule that I have is there's going to be, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, just, you know, thousands of, of trades every day that would be profitable. And they're gonna be more later on today and tomorrow and the next day. And it's okay if I make zero or if I lose, you know, two R. I, I'm really okay with that. Um, as long as I learn and keep learning and, you know, figure out why was I wrong? Like, is there something that I wasn't seeing? Was there a, a moving average uh, long-term or, you know, some resistance level from a few weeks ago, a few months ago that I, that I didn't chart right? You know, what, what was that? Um, so I'm just, I, I think it's sort of a humble, like everyday approach to learning. Like I've never arrived. I'm always learning. Um, mm. and, and I, and I think I have to always have that, this sort of, not a fear, but just sort of a respect of losing and, um, just a feeling every day that I'm learning and I will get better and you know never arrogance um another another one that i have that um is actually one that my neighbor said that i love and i adopted it is when you're right let yourself be right and when you're wrong let yourself be wrong and and often what what i was doing why that resonated so much kind of early in my trading was um the stock would move up a little bit and i would just sell it because i'm like oh i just gotta make sure i get it um, let it run. You know, you, you have to get a little more confidence in the things that are going to cause it to stop and turn around. And so let, let your runners run. Um, and so that's led me to have some awesome trades, um, you know, where I'm getting seven, eight, nine R, you know, from a trade. Yeah. You have had some home runs, man. I had some big ones. <laughs> yeah. Some really good ones. In fact, I, I remember last month you had a, a 30 R day and I was like, wow, wouldn't that be so awesome to have a 30 R day. And then literally like the day you came to park city, um, you I had, I had a 30 R day and yeah. I was like, wow. And, and there was a bunch of swings, you know, it was a, and it was a lot of puts a uh, bunch of day trades, bunch of swings. And I closed them out that day and I was like, holy crap, I just had a 30 R day. And, yeah, um, you know, that, that was awesome. That was, that was incredible. Um, and so, and then when you're wrong, let yourself be wrong. So <clears throat> sometimes you get a little stubborn, like, no, I'm going to wait till this works and I'm going to double down. And it's like, it's okay to be wrong. You yeah. Know, just be wrong, wrong, man. Be wrong gracefully. Like it's going to happen yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's going to happen so much. So if it's like, all right, well, you're wrong. Cool. Just get out. And that's it. You know, yep. uh, just accept it, smile, move on. It's helped me to envision or picture a friend or a trader or someone that I know that I'm, I'm handing them money, you know, saying, Hey, you beat me. Congratulations. We played the same thing. You won. I didn't. Good job. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's definitely the moving on thing is, is really key. How do you overcome not being able to pull the trigger on some trades or do you ever have that problem? Um, I've never had that problem. Um, maybe I've got a little gunslinger in me and a little bit too loose. Um, 
Well, that'd, that'd be I, my follow-up question is why? Why? How do you, because some people yeah. do and some people don't. So why, why do you not have that? In your um, <laughs> that's a good question, <laughs> Jeremy. I probably would have spent some time thinking about it. I, I'm okay taking a shot. Um, I mean, obviously I've got to analyze it and feel good about why I think that's a good trade. Um, and I've just kind of accepted that there's no way that I can be a hundred percent right. Um, you can have paralysis by analysis and all that. And so take a shot. Um, so I don't know that I've had any that I said, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I have, but I guess in the last few months, I, I think since I've kind of got into a little bit of a groove and had a lot more success, I, I feel like I haven't really had any where I've said, man, I, why didn't I take that? I was afraid. And, and um, I'm not afraid. I guess I'm just not afraid to take a trade. Um, I'm, okay to, I'm okay to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay to lose. Well, that's huge, man. That's the psychology piece that people do struggle with. And sometimes it can come from many different reasons, like some type of mental money flow. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all something in our mind. The mind's the hardest part to battle through all of this. Yeah. You know, so what, what does your daily schedule look like for your trading? I mean, I know you kind of mentioned it, but are you trading all day? Do you trade full time? Is this all you do? What does it look like? Yeah, so I, I, I'm still working full time. Um, I work from home, so nothing really has changed uh, for me <laughs> with, with everything that's going on. Um, and my schedule kind of varies. I used to travel uh, a fair bit, but I haven't been on a plane since all this lockdown has been going on. Um, the plane is missing me. <laughs> yeah. And it feels weird actually not to have been on a plane for a couple months. Um, so uh, I, I'm in the mountain time zone. So the market opens at 730 my time. So generally I've got an hour and a half, two hours of trading in the morning before I've got to do something. Uh, it depends on meetings that get scheduled, um, but I've got quite a bit of flexibility. So generally I, I wake up about six o'clock um, to, you know, stretch, get dressed, kind of get a drink take the dogs out to use the bathroom and all that. Um, and then kind of get set up and then see what's going on and uh, look at kind of news, uh, go through the spy and, and, you know, kind of my, all my list to see what's going on and um, make my, my short list, which I'm, I'm trying to make like, you know, less than, less than 10 that are on my short list for the day. Um, you know, I've had times where I've just had like 20 or 30, like they all look good. And so I, I've, I'm getting more picky now, you know, about the short list, which makes it easier to analyze, draw my lines, uh, kind of categorize them. And then I love to listen, you know, at seven, my time, uh, when everyone jumps in the room to everybody's thoughts and what they're looking at, um, your analysis, Brad's analysis, Blake's analysis. I, I love to, to kind of listen that. That kind of adds to my, to my thoughts and see what everybody's, what everybody's thinking. Got it. Love it, man. Uh, Thor says, let's see, what's your, do you have a, like a monthly goal, a weekly goal, daily goal, anything you try to hit, any kind of metrics you try to follow in regards to performance? I don't. Um, <clears throat> it's a good question. Uh, I really don't. I, I guess I should. Um, I just want to stack as many R's as I can you know, on a, on a given day. I think there was a comment yesterday or something in the Slack room about, Hey, once you hit your goal for the day, what do you do? And I'm like, keep, keep, keep stacking wood, like keep going, like, uh, yeah. you know? And so, um, you know, if I get one R great, uh, if I have a 30 R day, great. Uh, if I lose two R, I, I won't lose more than two R in a day. That is as one of my rules. Like, okay, I'm done. Um, it took me a while to accept that one, but, um, but I haven't had, um, a day like that in a while. So yeah, I mean, I'm like, like I'm at, uh, what am I at? 34 and a half hours for April. Um, and so that's, that's going well. Uh, do you track the difference between your swings and your day trades or? Yeah. Yep. Day trades, uh, I track them separate from swings. Um, and then I've started to do uh, some option sales. I don't do a lot of them, but my drive to Park City with Tony uh, really opened my eyes <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the I opportunity bet. with credit spreads. And so I'm like, huh, I gotta like look into this a little bit more. I'm seeing, getting more confidence. Um, so I've, I've taken a couple 
of those. So I'm kind of tracking those in a separate category as well. Got it. Well, man, first of all, congratulations for being on 34 hours for April. I mean, April has been a great month, but you really have, I think, inspired a lot of traders here at RLT because you do post a lot of consistent wins. I want you to keep doing it. Don't be afraid. Post the wins, man. I'm excited for you because this is huge. Like this is such a hard game. And when you get someone who does excel at it, you want to understand what they do. But mostly for me, we want to understand what they think and how they act and what yeah. processes they go through to slowly and methodically and incrementally become better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I totally agree. And I, I love um, these interviews, the videos that you do, um, hearing people's thoughts on Slack. I love kind of understanding well, where'd you come from? How did you think about this? And that totally has added, you know, to mine and, um, so it, yeah, helps me. it helps me so much, man. Like I'm just taking notes. Like when I, I hope people know when I interview, <laughs> when I interview traders, whoever they might be, I'm over here just trying to soak it up because I'm not doing it from a point of, you know, I, I'm doing it from a point of learning. We can all learn one new thing, one new tip and you know, one, one new approach to the way you got to be cool, calm and collected. So I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I just want to say thank you for, being a part of the community. Thank you for helping all the traders that you have helped. Congrats on your success and I hope you just keep on uh, crushing it. Uh, one other question. So Steven says, how much of your portfolio do you devote to day trading? Ah, oh, good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got three accounts, some, um, you know, two, two retirement accounts and um, I, I guess technically two trading accounts. So, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I kind of like the, uh, the one R 1% uh, philosophy mm -hmm. around the risk that I, that I have there. I mean, it depends on the trade. I, I would guess somewhere around 5% uh, per trade, something like that. I mean, it, I guess it varies, but you know, per trade, yeah. maybe 5% is involved. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause again, like when you're doing one, well, especially with your options trade, you're not really soaking up that much buying power generally to get into that position. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, so. killer, man. I love it. Well, I'm sure uh, hopefully in the future we'll have another chat, another interview. And again, if anyone out there wants to, uh, to chat with Alex, he's in Slack. You can message him. But thanks for being here, man. I truly appreciate your time. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Take likewise. care, everybody. Likewise. All right. Take care, man. All right. We'll see so you. Folks. Yeah. That's him. That's the man, Alex Hill. I had a chance to meet that handsome devil who is a, an absolute trading machine. I can, I can verify that he does eat food. So I do think he's human. I believe this also might be part robot because he trades like an absolute phenom. For the rest of the day, I'll keep this trade open on. AMD, uh, for those who might be in at 5474, targets are going to be up here around 5520 and some change. Roku looks strong, strong, strong. And uh, we did get filled on our swing trade. We have an entry at 109.14 on the limit. So we got, pulled, we got filled on our swing trade on Roku by 10 cents. We're already up $2 a share. Hope that continues uh, nicely. Spy doing its thing. Baba doing its thing. Uh, Tesla just very sideways and square, three sideways. So we'll see what happens on AMD. I'll update everyone else. But again, for those who are listening in, I appreciate you checking out and listening to this interview. If you ever want to be a part of Real Life Trading, it is our mission to enrich lives. You can go to reallifetrading.com, click on live trading. You can click on live class to see what class I'm teaching next. We have online courses, we have stock reviews, we have articles, we have all kinds of good stuff. My goal is to help people understand this stuff in any way possible. Steven asked another question. He said, how much has your performance improved since changing from 10 to 15 trades a day to three to four? And Alex replied in the chat pane, changing to three to four trades was a huge difference, much higher winning percentage. So I heard it there first. Folks from around the world, thank you so much for watching. You rock. Hope it was helpful and beneficial. And I will catch you later. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade it. Bye.